I am Dr. Georgina Tunggol Paredes, Professor Emeritus of uh, the Department of Preventive and Community Medicine of the University of the East Ramon Magsaysay Memorial Medical Center. I was uh, part of the team that revived PASCOM in 2010 and became the president of uh, PASCOM from 2011 to 2013. Now, the first milestone that I recognized is the creation of PASCOM through the endeavor of the Association of Philippine Medical Colleges. It was the first organization among medical academicians concerned with the teaching of preventive and community medicine, public health, under the banner of uh, the APMC. I think we were the first organization that was formed in the basic sciences. Now, the second is the after the creation of PASCOM by APMC, um, it was realized that not all the medical schools, about 25 that time, were at the same level in the teaching of the courses in community medicine. So um, the APMC therefore brought together faculty members from the various medical schools to meet at the RTR so that uh, the curriculum can be of each medical school can be discussed, scrutinized, and uh, from there, models or the best teaching practices can be generated. Now, uh, with the recognition of all these uh, uh, things in relation to the teaching of community medicine among medical schools, uh, there was a clamor for the establishment of base competencies that students in community medicine must learn at the end of each year and at the end of the course in medicine. So uh, it was suggested that a core curriculum in the discipline be created you know, based on the best practices and the uh, competencies expected during that time in relation to the needs of the country. So this was uh, actually published about uh, maybe a year after the meeting in PASCOM. PASCOM therefore was born in 1985 in Tacloban Lake. Now, uh, another milestone would be the entry of primary health care. No, the introduction and the adoption of primary health care as an approach to health by the government and supported by the academy, by the academy's inclusion of uh, primary health care teachings and practice in, in the medical curriculum. The Department of Health uh, Secretary then, Dr. Asurin, consulted with APMC and asked APMC to include no? primary health care in the teachings in preventive, not really in preventive medicine, but to incorporate it in teaching in the medical curriculum. And this was done so. And of course, the department that was assigned to be the lead teacher in community medicine would be the Department of Preventive and Community Medicine. Now, with the advent of uh, primary health care teachings, came the emergence of community-based health programs as internship uh, training in medicine. So a lot of medical schools adopted uh, community-based health programs as the internship uh, training of clinical clerks and uh, postgraduate internships in various medical schools. No, no. there was uh, the, the original... Uh, Barangay Clinic, where OPD services were offered, were now shifted to become uh, community-based health programs where people, the community and people were involved in the delivery of health care. There were barangay health worker training, uh, community diagnoses that were done by the barangay health workers and members of the community. And there was more community participation now in health care delivery and planning of services. 
the emergence of uh, the community-based health programs the academy became models and uh, venue for community medicine education. And this, I think, revolutionized the values and the orientation of uh, medical students in the practice of community medicine. No longer were the preventive and community medicine people labeled as the Department of Toilets, but now we were really into training uh, people to become uh, self-supporting and sustaining as far as health is concerned. Uh, the advent of formal teacher training sessions also, I think, contributed to the upliftment of the teaching of community medicine in, uh, in our country. Uh, this time in the uh, 60s, early 60s, formal teacher trainings in competency-based curriculum creation and uh, modernization of the strategies of teaching were being conducted and this also improved the teaching of community medicine and preventive medicine courses. PASCOM was in existence for 10 years from each uh, creation or organization and it went into hibernation for a long time until uh, the year 2010 when it was revived. And I guess uh, the reawakening of uh, PASCOM brought more development participation Got more development and participation on the part of uh, community medicine practitioners and uh, faculty members in the academy in community medicine. Now, the incorporation of uh, PASCOM is uh, another milestone. I would consider another milestone because uh, it uh, gave a structure and a personality to our organization. And the factors that brought about these developments in community medicine, I think uh, a major one was contributed by APMC and the creation of this organization, PASCOM. Then the introduction of primary health care in the curriculum and its practice among medical students, especially in the, in the community medicine rotations. The staggering cost of uh, health care, in spite of being still inadequate and of low quality, the majority of the population also became a factor for really pushing for primary health care and the development of community-based health program. So community-based health program essentially put into practice the principles advocated in primary health care. The development of the various strategies in teaching, uh, the development of community health research and scientific research in general, in the era of uh, evidence-based medicines, I guess, are also the, one of the factors that contributed to the development of community, community medicine practice and teachings in the country. And lastly, the reawakening of the organization has come also again brought together and unified all mentors in preventive and community medicine it is uh, it has become a dynamic organization and uh, i guess uh, it is but proper to refer to the one who concerted all his efforts so that this organization can be revived that is dr sanchez So what are, who are the pillars that I consider in this discipline that contributed to its uh, growth and permanency? So I would say um, in a local setting, the academy, Dr. Fernando Sanchez would be one of them, the foremost. He was an staunch, advo staunch advocate in the discipline, and he generously shared uh, knowledge, and also the preventive medicine curriculum of UERM to the newly opened schools during that time. The other person who I look up to is Dr. Presentacion Proralta, who after her training in the United States at Harvard for her MPH and her 
introduction to the community community medicine programs of University of Kentucky and Vermont introduced it in the academy at UERM. And this also became some of the models of uh, the schools where the faculty of UERM went when this newly the, the, the schools opened. Dr. Paulo Campos, who conceived the uh, C, C, UP CCHP in Valle Laguna, would be one of the pillars that uh, shifted no, the hospital-based uh, practice into the rural community, and that was in Bae. And uh, also Dr. Serge uh, Gassman, who together with Dr. Campos developed the program in Bae. <laughs> and of course, we have Dr. Angelo Manalo of uh, Mindanao State University, who essentially made Communities, their classroom, being short of all the facilities in the in MSU in itself, the community medicine subject was really there in the community, learning the way how people work and interacted with each other, and what uh, health services were needed and uh, appropriate for the existing communities. And in Cebu, we also have the person of Dr. Tomas Fernandez, who headed the Paknaan project, which was more or less a similar to CCHP of uh, Bae Laguna. The one in Savior uh, was also a community-based health program, which became also the program of uh, UERM in the late uh, 1980s. The further growth of uh, PASCOM as a lead organization for all academicians in the field of preventive and social medicine and uh, the recruitment of more members and advocates in the discipline, I guess, is uh, something that we look forward in the future because this will unite the faculty members who will be teaching community medicine and hopefully with the enlightened advancement and uh, dissemination of information through PASCOM and the development of these faculty members, our graduates in community medicine or in medicine in general can be more adept to the current methods and practices in community medicine and to do relevant community medicine practice. PASCOM also has a way of uh, keeping the curriculum attuned to the changing and evolving needs of society and the global community by way of how they look at all these things where faculty members from the various schools now numbering 60 of them in the philippines can be educated but uh, standards and policies ensuring the quality of community medicine education be initiated and established in the philippine medical schools is one thing that i'd like to see to that would lead to future development in the practice of community medicine and its teaching in the Philippines. The monitoring of these medical schools, its medical graduates who would excel in their practice of community medicine and continue to uplift the community health state and state of public health. Another future development that I would wish to see in the future is the establishment of a functioning research arm as far as PASCOM is concerned, where uh, community medicine researches can be published in relation to the good practices in community medicine and some of the innovative uh, methods of teaching community. Lastly, as uh, in the future, I would also like uh, PASCOM to be able to publish a textbook in preventive and community medicine for Filipino medical students. It will contain a, uh, the guide and the good practices in the teaching of community medicine and how to approach communities in order to improve their health, assess their health and improve health situation hand in hand with the people in the community. Aside from the textbook, I would like to see also in the future uh, PASCOM um, editing and revising 
the core curriculum in preventive medicine and community medicine so that there will be a continued guidance of all medical schools and more or less uh, baseline competencies for all medical students can be more or less uniform. I'm Dr. Ramon Paterno, a retired uh, NIH research faculty. Uh, I'm also a former past president of uh, PASCOM and currently a Universal Healthcare Study Group member. One cannot discuss the development of community medicine in the Philippines without relating it to the global context. But let me start with my personal context within the national context of the Philippines. Uh, the national context can be summarized as mayaman ang Pilipinas, mahirap ang mga Pilipino. The 1970s were years of political ferment, change, and the national call to serve the people. And we were a group of medical students, and we were dissatisfied with the health system characterized by national health palaces such as the heart center, lung center, kidney center, that still resulted in 7 out of 10 Filipinos who die, die without any medical attendance. And we also had our group a dissatisfaction with the existing medical education, um, which required that one had to hold one's life uh, on, on hold, alienated from the people while one studies medicine. It was the 70s and our group wanted to be relevant. Our first year, we experienced the great flood of Central Luzon and armed with our vast knowledge of gross anatomy and a quick course on first aid, uh, some of us went to Central Luzon to give uh, first aid and health service. And then martial law was declared. And in the process, we wanted to be relevant. So we made our own graduation of we said we shall consider the health education of our people as our responsibility. We shall in turn uh, strive to learn from our people's experience in health and in life so that we shall not become isolated from them. So we started searching for alternatives. We, we underwent summer immersion between first and second year in Bai Laguna just two weeks of living in a rural barangay. And in third year, we went to Capis Emmanuel Hospital and to see and find out that hospital practice is indeed viable outside of the national capital region. Then a group of us did our internship in Davao, uh, belying the long-held uh, belief that PGH is the best training hospital. And then after we graduation, we embarked on community health-based program. So off we went. I went to the Cordilleras and went and lived with the people, ate with them, uh, danced with them, and then established our uh, village health worker program. Uh, we partnered through the pioneering effort of Dr. Jaime Galvestan and the support of Dr. Mita Pardo de Tavera, known for a TB program, we developed a community-based health program, brought the microscope up the uh, mountains of Kalinga Payao. And here you can see my first batch of uh, volunteer community health work. At the same time, we were out in the field, not really knowing what was going on in the global context. Uh, William Latham in 1979 wrote about the evolution of community medicine. 
He described it as that branch of medical science concerned with the health of defined population groups which evolved in developing countries in contrast to the evolution of medicine in affluent industrialized countries which was basically based on individual doctor and patient doctor patient relationship although community medicine was born out of necessity in third world countries william blatt them asserted that it was superior to that of an indiv individually based health system again another co uh, component in the global context was the background papers on the WHO's commission on social determinants of health which identified three global trends china's barefoot doctors which we were also aware of in medical school Latin America's liberation theology and basic Christian uh, community organizing and our very own community-based health programs in the Philippines and other similar countries. This background paper identified these trends, including our community-based health program initiative that led to the declaration of primary health care at Alma Ata. In spite of our being in the community, we as a group were not aware at that time of the declaration of the primary health care at Alma Ata. This would be a bit UP Manila centric, but it might also show a trend in the national development. UP in the 70s or late 60s had this program, Comprehensive Community Health Program, started by Dr. Compa Capos, which was a complementary alternative to a hospital-centric medical education, but an example of modern community medicine, which has been described by William Blatten and which I will be discussing in another slide. Then the community-based health program, which was pioneered at that time by Jimmy Galvestan, although I understand from Dr. Adelet de La Paz that this was already being started by the rural missionaries ahead of Dr. Jimmy Tan. But Jimmy Galvestan was our pathfinder. He was the one was able to draw about 13 of our classmates to go out, live with the people, uh, implement a participatory approach, and use some kind of socioeconomic uh, analysis framework. And then, of course, we have Fernando Sanchez of UE, uh, Ramon Magsaysay Memorial Hospital. And Another uh, con contributor to the development of academic community medicine would be UP Manila's Community Health and Development Program, which employs interprofessional approach and it shifts from a model health program to a partnership with the local government unit. I just like to add here that the com comprehensive community health program that was earlier started was an example of a pilot program, a model program of the academe uh, taking over the health system of a local government unit. And because it's a model program, it is difficult to re replicate. The advancement of the UP Manila Community Health and Development Program, it recognizes the need to create a partnership with the local government unit. My reference for this, unfortunately, is a book dated January 1979. And as early as 1979, William Blatten was discussing the future of academic community medicine 
in developing countries. And what he discussed was the development would be from what he described as modern community medicine, wherein you have a small group of faculty members, for example, the Department of Community Medicine, or a Department of Social and Community Medicine, or a Department of Social and Preventive Medicine, endeavoring to teach and motivate medical students by exposing them to health and to some extent social problems of the poor. The objectives were modest and it was really never to address the social problems of the poor. And this would transition, William Latham asserted, to the future of academic community medicine, wherein the whole university is mobilized to address the socio-economic development of a community in which health is included, becomes the major objective. It is necessarily multidisciplinary, equity and quality of life is a major force. What are the other factors for the development of community medicine? Let me cite the Universal Health Care Act and its implementing rules and regulation in its provision on health human resource. And it states the CHED or community, uh, uh, the Commission on Higher Education and the PRC and the Department of Health in coordination with medical and allied professional societies shall A, reorient healthcare professional and healthcare worker curriculum towards primary health care with emphasis on public health and primary care. B, determine recommended areas of study in public health to be incorporated in the curriculum of all health science education. So this would be the future development of community medicine practice and teaching in the Philippines. Teaching, the implementation of universal health care, health human resource provision, a reorientation of all health professional education towards primary health care with focus on public health and primary care. Note the distinction between primary health care, which is the entire philosophy articulated in Alma Ata, and primary care, which is a level of care. With the implementation of the universal health care, health human resource provision, we would in effect public health and nursing, public health with all health professions. And we would have health professional graduates, interprofessional and multidisciplinary who can form a primary health care team at the municipal level within a new normal that leads to equitable growth. I'm Dr. Edelina Padilla de La Paz, or known as Delen de La Paz. I was former PASCOM president from 2016 to 2019, and a retired uh, professor from the Department of Family and Community Medicine of the UP College of Medicine. My experience with uh, community medicine in the Philippines is basically my experience with the NGOs. Um, I started working with them in the 1980s after I finished my medicine uh, course at the UP College of Medicine. But I'd like to trace back the beginnings of community medicine with the uh, community-based health programs started by the rural missionaries in 1973. Uh, when martial law was declared and the uh, services, health services to the far-flung communities were really very uh, negligible. There were no uh, doctors, no medicines, and no training 
of community people and health workers in this area. So 1973, the rural missionaries started their community-based health work in three pilot areas in the country, in Ilagan, Isabela, in Tacloban, Leite, and in Iligan, uh, Mindanao. So I had a chance to work with them in their Putuan health program in the 1980s. So from there, uh, the doctors who pioneered in these community-based health programs uh, tried to see what can be done vis-a-vis -vis community medicine. And uh, this is where they started with community-based training, research, and services. And they were also linking up to the medical schools and encouraging new graduates to work in these areas as uh, these were really very much needed at the time because the health services being seen at the time were very uh, dole out oriented and very limited. So we had what we call, what they called the Marcos, the medical assistant to rural communities and other sectors, and Imelda, the integrated medical expedition to less developed areas. But these were all very uh, sporadic only uh, from time to time, and it wasn't a sustainable program. So the rural missionaries, as well as those who already joined these uh, services, including Dr. Jimmy Tan, Dr. Jim uh, Buching and Bebel Paterno, uh, Dr. Manolet Nairit, Dr. Hilary Nairit, Dr. Bobby and Sylvia de La Paz, Dr. Jim Lopez and others, um, tried to see how uh, training from the perspective of uh, communities uh, would really be done so that it's not hospital centric not doctor centric but really uh, encouraging and starting from where the people are. and these were the basic principles that the alma ata declaration in uh, 1978 really uh, uh, spoused on and uh, it can be said that the uh, alma ata declaration in 1978 also booked pick up uh, inspire, inspiration from the CBHPs in the Philippines, the Promotores de Salud program in Latin America, and from the Barefoot Doctors in China. So uh, from here on, uh, the Council for Primary Health Care was organized to serve as the national institution, helping out the needs with the needs of this uh, doctors training them to do uh, situational analysis, uh, structural uh, uh, discussions on uh, uh, also looking into the broader uh, social economic conditions of people. So there was the SICA, the situational investigation, the class analysis, because we have to look at where the, um, who is in control, who has the power, and where is the people in all this. And it's the people whom we should be able to uh, empower and really help in terms of empowering themselves and making sure that health programs are maintained. But of course, there was the external factor that was uh, affecting all this because when the structural adjustment programs of the IMF uh, were started in the 1980s and the budgets for health were really very much uh, diminished. This is where um, the CBHPs were raising issues about the role of government in making sure that uh, budgets are, uh, are available. And when the World Bank came out with its uh, investing in health policy in 1993, where um, these were the blueprint for privatization, again, the NGOs made a big statement that uh, health services should not be privatized because these are uh, basic health services that the government should be responsible for. And when WTO came out in 1995, including medicines in their patent uh, protection, then it was uh, already raised also that health is not a commodity, it is a basic right. And that's why another milestone was the People's Health Movement that was organized in 2000. They came out with the People's Charter for Health that really spoused for um, re revalidation and going back to the Alma Ata Declaration of Health as a Right, and that uh, it should be a people-centered health sector. So these developments help to contribute the development of community medicine in the country, uh, looking at the global and international context as well. And with us here in the locals, the 
NGOs linked up with the academe and PASCOM was really very uh, in instrumental here at APMC because we were tapping the faculty of uh, family and community medicine. We were tapping the graduates of these schools to now work in community-based health programs after graduation and making sure that our com commitment to community medicine starts from uh, first year college of medicine on to internship and uh, it is uh, integrated in the curriculum. So the tie up of uh, academe, NGOs, and LGUs, because we cannot just say we will do the work ourselves, because it is the responsibility of government. And government should make sure that really the right to health is attained by the people. With the help of the people's uh, experiences, people's organizations, the academe, and also uh, some of our own colleagues in the Department of Health and other government agencies, we continue to push that community medicine is an integral part of uh, the medical education and is really helping people to access health services at the community. First of all, the community situation at the time, it was a martial law years, and there was really deprivation. So it pushed people to really uh, develop their own uh, resources and while uh, organizing themselves, so uh, teaching themselves how to take care of the health of the people in the community. So, uh, but still demanding what is rightfully there. So this was something that was also uh, for the local situation, it was a uh, critical period because some of our doctors were harassed some of our doctors were uh, arrested and some of our doctors like Bobby de la Paz was killed because of this kind of uh, interventions at the community where people were being uh, helped in terms of empowering themselves. So uh, this were critical uh, um, situation that pushed for the further organization of communities and the development of community based health programs and community medicine. Um, the organizing also of the Council for Primary Health Care, and then later on the organization of the Council for Health and Development with the merger of the rural missionaries, the Council for Primary Health Care and the urban missionaries, they uh, strengthen the role of uh, NGOs, the role of communities, the role of academia in ensuring that community programs are really implemented and people are know what uh, are aware of the problems and what they themselves can do and demand from the community. Internationally, uh, the push factors were also globalization. So uh, with globalization, really health became a commodity. Health was no longer looked at as a right. It was like, if you have money, then you will have health. But that's not the point. The point is health is a basic human right and it should be accessed and enjoyed by everybody. And this is where we always go back to the Alma Ata Declaration of Primary Health Care. Primary health care continues to be our uh, push factor and globally this is being done with the support also of the people's health movement. Activities have evolved around communities and the uh, right of communities to uh, have their services. So uh, the People's Health Movement also came out with a critic of the universal health care, uh, showing that it doesn't look at primary health care and social determinants of health, but only looks at a, a health uh, perspective that is hospital-centric, doctor-centric, or even uh, health provider-centric. It should go beyond that. And we cannot really have health unless we improve on the social and economic conditions of people. Social determinants of health is a very important factor in the implementation of universal health care. And unfortunately, this is not being addressed because it's so uh, primary care, not even primary health care. So these are some of the uh, influential factors that really pushed the community medicine should be more holistic and more uh, community oriented rather than hospital. I really appreciate the rural missionaries who started all this. So they were three sisters, uh, Sister Savior of uh, the uh, Sipo Sisters. 
Sister Eva Baron of the Medical Missionary Sisters and the uh, uh, Sister Mayang Mary Grenell of the Marinal Sisters. And there were also some foreign sisters like Sister Nanette Berenson from the Missionary Sisters of uh, uh, St. Julie Pastel in the Netherlands. And I, I look up to her as one of my mentors because she was the one who mentored me when I did my CBHP work in Butuan. And I also look at the community organizers who were there helping us, uh, encouraging us to do community organizing even if we were not trade for it. So I'd like to say uh, Oi Ipo as a community organizer was very uh, influential in my work in CBHP. Then of course internationally we have the Dr. David Werner who authored the book Where There Is No Doctor and Helping Health Workers Learn. Dr. David Saunders from South Africa who wrote about the struggle of health is a struggle for national liberation and uh, of course the liberation theology of uh, of those who were in Latin America who, who said that it's really people who are uh, oppressed and those who are marginalized that have to be prioritized. And the other book of Dr. David Sanders and Dr. David Werner, Questioning the Solution, the Politics of Primary Health Care, was very uh, good uh, analysis for why primary health care was not taking off. Locally, we also have Dr. Jimmy Galvestan, who really worked as one of the pioneers of CBHP and those who were the those who initiated this in the various parts of the country, Dr. Buching and Bebo Paterno in the Kalinga Cordillera area, Dr. Um, Manolet Dairit and Ellery Dairit in the Mindanao area, the Tagum area, Dr. Bobby and Sylvia de La Paz in the summer lit areas, Dr. Jun Lopez in the lit areas, as well as Dr. Uh, Lenny Hara in the southern Tagalog area. So these were people who worked initially i'm sorry this is up centric because they are my experience they were my mentors when i was a medical student and eventually we were able to get also so many other graduates from different schools now with the help of pascom and apmc it was uh, really uh, spread out to all the medical colleges the need to organize and uh, ensure that community medicine is an integral part of the curriculum. Nowadays, the People's Health Movement has Dr. Zafula uh, Chowdhury from Bangladesh, who also organized their own health work in community health work and their national uh, and their drug company, the Gono Shastaya Kendra in uh, uh, Savar, Bangladesh. We also have Dr. Amit Sen Gupta, Dr. Mira Shiva in India. And Dr. Uh, she's not a doctor, but a community organizer, Maria Zuniga in the Nicaragua and Latin American areas. Um, we also have Professor Fran Bong in um, Adelaide, uh, Australia, who was writing books on public health and how this should really be addressing community issues and not from a perspective of the technocrats, but from the perspective of the practitioners. There are so many others. I'm sorry I cannot name all of them, but they were really uh, influential in ensuring that uh, community medicine uh, is really one of those that would encourage graduates of medical schools to work in com communities that would benefit the marginalized and poor sectors of society. I would like to see community medicine as one of the major um, content in the curriculum as well as in the practice. And this is where uh, we hope to influence even the specialists like the surgeons. How do you address uh, tumors? How do you address uh, diseases? You have to look also in the context of where the person can, came from, the community uh, issues around that patient, like uh, liver tumors. Uh, is this related to uh, parasitism is this related to perhaps even schistosomiasis that continue to be a big uh, problem in communities so how do we also address different uh, specialties that they will consider what the patient's conditions are in the community in terms of intervention management and even advice to the patient so community medicine will have a specific uh, primary role to play in terms of uh, influencing policies. Even the Department of Health should be addressing these issues more because 
majority of the people's illnesses start from the community and the uh, we have to stop it at the community level before they are able to progress further into secondary and tertiary cases. Uh, we can really nip many of the illnesses in the bud. But again, it's not just a medical intervention. It's looking at society as a whole, looking at how do we improve the economic conditions of people? How do we improve living conditions? How do we improve working conditions? Uh, these are basic how do we improve nutrition? So agriculture will also have to be addressed. And how do we look at uh, um, the way government is uh, addressing people's uh, people's health as a whole, not just the absence of illness or disease, but it's really looking at the holistic approach. That health, as defined, is the state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being. So it needs the... Uh, support of all the specialties. Community medicine should stand up as one of the specialties in the medical profession.